Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. There's a great opening, right? Andrew here. I watch anime, but I'm lazy, so I'm only giving each show of the spring 2017 season one episode to hook me. Welcome to Debut Review. Okay, so today's show is Sakura Quest. The quest for Sakura. All right, let's see if I can read this because it's really small again. Uh, five young women have one thing in common. Boobs. That's not what it says. Five young women have one thing in common. The careers they planned for themselves weren't working out. Job dissatisfaction, trying to make ends meet, and personal insecurities lead each of them to start working at a local tourism bureau where their lives become intertwined. As the girls experience their first year on the job, they learn a lot about their town, their industry, and themselves. Hmm. Is it just me, or is there like a alien bird thing peeking over that house, hotel looking building in the back? And is that guy in the green shirt behind the five, like, really angry? Is, is he gonna beat them up? Hey, you, 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 you stole my dog. I know it was you. I'm gonna kick your butt. Wait a minute. Look at look at the right and left side of that building. There's like little lizardy hands. Is there an alien in this? I mean, reading the description, it sounds like kind of a a uh, a character study, maybe even a slice of life type of show. But uh, I think there might be aliens in this. Yeah, they learn more about their they learn about the town, their industry, and themselves. And the alien that's mind-controlled the populace, and they have to uh, break the psychic connection and free the people sheep and rise up against the alien bird creature. Let's see if I'm right. It's okay. Okay. Um, there's a line, you see. On this side of the line is boring. It's like standing here on the line, and it's like, oh, oh, am I gonna go over? Am I gonna go over? Whoa, about to fall, about to fall, but it doesn't quite get into boring. So, eh? Um,. Uh, so the green bird monster that's peeking over the building in the back, that's, um, Chupacabra. Yeah, Chupacabra. So there's a small little town out in the middle of nowhere, uh, lots of farmland and stuff, probably, like, Main Street with a bunch of businesses on it, and that's, like, the entire town. So it's like, Kate is Kentucky. Um, <clears throat> which is where my mom lives. Um, so, uh, they love their town, and they're happy with their town, and they want more people to come to their town to, you know, so, monies, uh, but also just to share the wonderfulness of, hey, there's, there's mountains and trees and stuff. So, they kind of build this tourism center, which is what's pictured in the poster here, and, uh, they have a whole backstory with a, kind of a, Sir Arthur pulling the sword from the stone and becoming the knight that slays the chupacabra and uh, there's a queen who rules on the throne. There's a whole goofy story and they have a whole thing where people come from far away to look at this silly chupacabra memorabilia and, you know, everyone gets to sit on the throne and wear the crown and take pictures. It's a tourism thing, but they've fallen uh, in rough times, so they put out a... Uh, a job request for someone to come fill the role of the Queen of the Chupacabras or whatever. And so our protagonist, whose name I don't remember, well, her she's nicknamed Yoshino, so Yoshino, um, 
Uh, she's a just about graduating college. She's uh, she lives in Tokyo. She's originally from the sticks, but she moved to Tokyo because she doesn't like the sticks. Moved to Tokyo, graduating college, can't find a job, but gets this job offer, which ends up being a mistake because someone can't write their kanji correctly, and so they ended up calling her instead. Oops. And so she uh, doesn't read the contract, which is for a year to play the queen of this chupacabra town. Uh, she thinks it's for a day. Always read the fine print, kids. Uh, so she goes out there and she gets she does a little ceremony where she's crowned queen, and then she's like, "Okay, I'm going home. I'm like, you, you ain't going nowhere. You signed a contract." And she's like, no, I'm going home. So she's it's the middle of the night. Of course, well, it's, it's like ten o'clock at night, but small town, so like everything's closed. But she finds a bus and she gets on. It's like, are you going to the station? It's like, no, going to the bus depot. It's like ten, and there's this some dude in the back of the bus with like a ukulele going, strum. Does the bus have eyes? Strum. Does the bus have a nose? Strum a strum. If it had a nose, would we be the hair in that nose? I have a feeling there's some pun work going on here, but I'd have to stop and really listen to the Japanese and not read the uh, subtitles. <laughs> really hard to uh, hear on your first pass when you are not Japanese literate. Um, <clears throat> so she has a funny reaction. She's like, <laughs> she just kind of, she's like, okay, I'm leaving. And she just slowly backs off the bus. This is never explained. I'm sure the character will show up again. But uh, some of the characters are actually kind of fun. The, the old guy who organizes the whole uh, chupacabra thing, uh, he passes this woman in the street who's just got a real sour look on her face. And she's like, hey, where are you going, you old fart? And he's like, oh, shut up, you old bag. <laughs> Apparently these two just snipe at each other. It's just this little moment, and she doesn't show up again, but it's it's a cute little humanizing moment. Um, so, uh, so she decides that she's going to, well, I mean, she is under contract, but uh, she still seems to be, by the end of the episode, kind of fighting whether she wants to do this or not. Oh, I'm skipping the best part. So, uh... Guy, old guy who runs the tourism bureau uh, hears that she's trying to run away, so they track her down in the middle of the night, and he puts out on a chupacabra suit and jumps into the middle of the road. He's like, <laughs> and she's like, ah! and she runs because it's dark and there's a monster. I mean, who wouldn't run? And then she, suddenly she runs past a sword in the stone. It, obviously, you know, it was a paper mache prop, and she's like, the heck? And, um, she just runs past it, and one of the other women who are there is like, Uh, help, help, the chupacabra's attacking me! He's like, rawr. And you sit there and you watch this and like, Now, are they gonna do... Now, obviously, they want her to pull the sword from the stone and slay the chupacabra because that would make her feel the hero or, you know, bind her by the, the, the tradition of something... And you're thinking, is she so stupid that she's actually going, I'm going to save my friend with a sword that just happens to be in the middle of the road with the guy in the obvious costume. Uh, no, she walks up and she hits him in the head with her bag. <laughs> and it cuts to like a doo-doo ambulance. Uh, it's pretty well done. It's pretty funny. Um, so she, uh, it's like, all right, fine. So she goes back to the dorm where she was staying and... The door is locked, and she's like, oh, no. Of course, it's probably like 11 or midnight. She... And it cuts to the manager's inside sleeping, like you might be at that time of night. So she walks all the way over to the tour tourism building, where, however far that is. I guess I'll spend the night here, and I'm thinking... Did you not consider knocking louder? <laughs> or yet? Hey, manager, wake up! Whatever. So, uh, you know, the, as a first episode, it's okay. As I was saying earlier, it, it's toeing the line of just kind of boring. But there's enough good stuff, enough, enough funny things, enough uh, quirky characters to be, oh, there, there could be something here. So um, it depends on what all else I watch in this series is, is really going to be the... Uh, uh, 
the linchpin for whether I, like, for, I words fail me. I'm hungry. I have a, I have a fish thawing, so I, I want to eat dinner. Um, how, you know, whether I watch episode two is going to depend on how good the rest of the shows in the series I watch are. Uh, if there's just a bunch of great shows, oh man, I need to watch this, oh, I need to watch this too, this will probably be lost among the shuffle, but um, yeah, it may be something I go back to and check out episode two and see if it's something, uh, see if the characters are people I want to follow on their further adventures. So, uh, not not terrible, it's a, a little dry, but it, it, has, it, it has a handful of fine moments. And a handful may not sound like much, but when it's only a 22, 23 minute episode, you know, that, that's a fair portion of, you know, less than half an hour. So, hey, yeah, and that's what I have to say about that. Supper time. Catch you later.